Welcome to a new episode of my series about accessing hardware over QT GUIs. In today's video I will show you how to control the onboard LEDs of this CP2112 board over a QT GUI by using checkboxes. So let's start. The first thing I will do is I will open up QT Creator and create a new project. So let's go. So I've already guided you through this wizard but this time I will do one thing a little bit differently. So I will create a new project called LDs in my programming folder. And now here in my last video I've used CMake as a build system. But today I will use QMake instead. Because today I will add some existing files to this project and there here QMake is easier, because if you're doing it with CMake, you have to manually edit the CMake list.txt file and if I select QMake, the Qt Creator IDE will take care of this and make it a little bit more convenient for me. So I will choose QMake today and the rest will just go with the defaults. Okay, so here we have our project and let's see, or yeah, let's start by drawing our GUI. So here, what I will need today is, I will need two checkboxes. So this checkbox, yeah, you maybe know them from, you yeah, know, from other programs. Basically you have a box here and if you click on it, the box will be checked. If you click on it again, the box will be unchecked. And here you have a label telling you what this box is all about. And what I will do here is I will rename this object to LED1. I will change the text to LED1 here too. And here in the property menu, we can see this font section here. So here we can change the font of this label here and I will make it bold. And let's say I will make it, um, yeah, I will use a size of 16 here. So it's a little bit more readable for you. Okay, that should be it. And in my main window, I will change the title to from main window to LED control. Okay, nice. Okay, and I will copy this here. So I have two checkboxes because I want to control two LEDs. And here I will call this LED2. Okay, and maybe let's add a label here. So here in the display widgets, we have labels. And I will call this label, click on box to control. LEDs. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, and let's. Uh, so if I press um, or if I hold control and click on this, I can select both of them. And with this table view, yeah, I will. I have them aligned here, so this is really nice. And if I click here on my table, I can drag them around in this window together. Okay, so much for the GUI. What I will do now is I will create um, some new slots functions here. So when I go to slot, Q checkbox has the um, slot state changed with an integer here. And I will create this slot here for both, um, both checkboxes here. Okay, and I will change this from arc1 to um, box state and down here as well. Okay, so now we have to take care of accessing the LEDs. And for accessing the LEDs, I will just use basic GPIO functions. So I've already done a video about how to access um, GPIO pins from a simple C application in Linux. And I've already created some classes here because here we have object oriented programming. So if I go in my programming folder, here I have the files gpo.cpp and gpo.h. Let me copy them into our projects folder here. And if I left click on this project, I can add existing files. And here I will select gpo.cpp and gpo.h. This would be a little bit more difficult if I would have used CMake as a build system, then I would have to edit the CMake list.txt file to add the files this way. But now 
after a little bit of time they should appear here in the header folder and the sources folder. So let's take a look. So here I'm including some standard C headers and a syst C++ header for exceptions. Then I'm declaring the class GPIO. This class is a constructor which needs um, the device file path and name as an argument. I have a destructor and I have two methods to set the state of the two LEDs. As private variables I have a file descriptor for my GPIO chip file. I have a GPIO handle request called LEDs for the GPIO output handling and I have a GPIO handle data to set the value of the LEDs. And if I go here into this class, here in the constructor, what I'm basically doing is I'm opening up the device file, which was passed as an argument to my constructor. Then I open this device file and if I check if the opening was successful. If not, I'm throwing an exception. Then I will configure the GPIOs to outputs. So therefore I will use this um, handle request struct here. So the flags are GPIO handle request outputs because we want to request outputs. I will set a consumer label. I will set the default values to one because these LEDs are wired in a way that if the LEDs are set to zero, they will be turned on. And if I set them to one, they will be off. And after initialization, I want the LEDs to be off. Then here in lines, I say how much GPIOs I want to um, configure with this request and I want to configure two and in the line offsets I can set the offset so for LED um, 1 is connected to IO 0 of the chip and LED 2 is connected to IO 1 of the chip. Here I'm applying my GPO request with IO control and in case um, the return value is smaller than 0 I will close the device file and I will throw an error. But if not, everything was fine and I will set the default values of the LEDs to 1 with this GPO handle data struct here. Okay, the destructor of the class will close the um, file descriptor to my two GPIOs and will close the file descriptor, descriptor to my device file. And then I have two methods which will set the value of the LED over um, IO control commands to. And that's basically it. Okay, now here in the main window.h um, header file, I will include um, gpio.h to be able to have, to have access to my gpio class. And here in private variables, I will add a new pointer to an object from the class gpio and I will call it cp2112 here. Okay, so here in my main window.cpp in the constructor, what I will do is I will dynamically allocate memory for my new object. And I have to pass um, I have to pass um, the device file name to my constructor. So this is um, GPIO chip zero here. Okay. And of course, when I'm dynamically allocating memory, I have to free it. And this I can do in the destructor of the Qt application. And here I will just delete CP2112 here. And here in on um, in LED stage changed. Maybe let's change this to, to box state here. So yeah. So here I will just call the um, method to set the LED's value. So this is set LED1. And the state is box state is equal to zero. So if the box is um, not ticked, this value here will be, will be zero. And by doing this, I will set the LED or the GPIO to one, which will turn the LED off. And that's basically all I'm doing here. And in case the um, state changed and the box is ticked now, this value will be bigger than zero and I will set the GPIO pin to zero, which will turn the LED on. And let's do the same thing for LED, LED2 in this slot here. 
Okay, so that should be it. Let me try to build the project and let's see how much mistakes I've made. Yes, yeah, here, here I forgot a semicolon. So this is this error here. Let's try it again. Now it's looking good. And now if I run this application, you see the LED was turned off because by default I'm initializing all LEDs to be off. And if I click a checkbox, hey, you can see LED is on now. So that's pretty cool. That's how to access um, or control LEDs in a QT application by using checkboxes. In my next video, I will show you how to use combo boxes to dynamically select the GPIO chip device file which should be used for the project. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.